All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at the experiment called Concentration of a Saturated Solution for Grade 9 Advanced Science. This is in your science booklets in the Unit 3 on Solubility. The purpose of the experiment is to determine the concentration of a saturated solution, uh, or the solubility of a salt. Those two things mean the same thing. We're going to be using sodium chloride, table salt. This is the same salt you'd have in the kitchen, although it's a little bit purer than what you would have at home. And I've got about five grams of the table salt in a little cupcake. I've also got about five milliliters of, just of water measured in a graduated cylinder. The exact volume is not critical. We have an evaporating dish. An evaporating dish is just a white porcelain dish with a little bit of a lip on it. You heat it and just like the name sounds, you evaporate liquids from it. So let's begin by recording the mass of our empty evaporating dish. If you have your own data table in your booklet, you can record the mass of the empty evaporating dish, 45.01 grams. This is a centigram balance. The last two digits are decimals. So 45.01 grams. Now we need to make a saturated solution. So I have a test tube and I'm gonna pour all of the salt, the sodium chloride into that test tube. The sodium chloride is our solute. The solute is the substance that you're going to dissolve. And we're gonna add the solvent in this case, the water, so about five mils of water. Now at this point, the, what we have is a mixture. We have a mixture of table salt, sodium chloride, and water. Some of the salt is dissolving into the water, and we have a heterogeneous mixture as a result. It's heterogeneous because the concentration of the dissolved salt is higher at the bottom where the salt is, than it would be at the top of the water, where there's very little salt at this point. So when you have different concentrations throughout the liquid, you have what's referred to as a heterogeneous mixture. We're going to take a rubber stopper and put the rubber stopper on top of the test tube, and then we're going to shake, shake, shake for about five minutes to dissolve as much of that salt as we can. Now I've got another test tube already prepared. So here's another test tube that I've been shaking for about five minutes. And you can see that in this test tube, there's still undissolved salt at the bottom of the test tube. That's important. If all of the salt had dissolved, then the solution that's been produced would, highly, would be unlikely to be saturated. At this point, because we were shaking, the concentration of the salt everywhere in that liquid is the same. So it's no longer a heterogeneous mixture, it's a homogeneous mixture, and that's referred to as a solution. Because there's undissolved salt at the bottom of the test tube, then this solution is saturated. It's saturated because it's reached its highest possible concentration, and no more solute will dissolve at this temperature. Now after shaking, there's lots of salt on the edges of the test tube, and I don't want that because I'm going to have to pour the liquid out of the test tube. So I'm going to just turn the test tube on its side several times. What that will do is clear a path on one side of the tube so it, won't, it will not have any salt particles on the glass. All right, so I've cleared a path. Now I'm going to take my evaporating dish that we had already weighed and I'm going to decant. That's an important word. You might want to write the definition down. To decant the solution means we're going to pour the saturated solution out of the test tube while leaving all of the undissolved solid behind. So when you pour liquid out, but you leave the solid behind, you are decanting. So let's decant the saturated solution into the evaporating dish. You don't have to get it all out, but you do need to get as much out as you can. The, the more you get, the better, but you don't want any undissolved salt to get in the dish. So there's a little bit of liquid left behind. That's okay. Let me put that test tube aside. So now the, the evaporating dish now has some saturated solution in it. 
let's look at the mass again. So record this mass in your data booklet. This is the mass of the evaporating dish with the saturated solution. It's about 51.28 grams. So now let's use the evaporating dish as its name suggests. We're going to evaporate the water from the solution. So I've got a wire stand and a small micro burner. I'll turn the gas on. I'm going to light the burner. There we go. And we're now going to heat the solution and evaporate the water. This may not be obvious to you, but as we heat, that solution has both water and salt in it. The salt is dissolved in the water. The salt does not evaporate, but the water does. So after a moment or two, as it starts to boil inside the dish, we're going to see water evaporating and we'll see salt, solid white salt, start to precipitate in the dish. In the video, you're unlikely to be able to see that salt. So we're going to be heating this for several minutes. I'm going to pause the video and we'll come back in a, in a couple minutes. Okay, so now the water inside the evaporating dish is, evap is uh, boiling quite vigorously. You might be able to see some steam escaping from the top of the evaporating dish. And I can see inside the dish, around the edges, I can see white salt beginning to precipitate. There's less and less water inside the dish, and so there's less and less liquid visible, and there's more and more white solid. In just a moment, it's going to start looking pasty. In fact, it's getting there now. So there's so little liquid left that the what's left in the dish is starting to become pasty. And now it's starting to spit. There's a little bit of salt spitting out of the dish. That spitting salt would be a source of error because it's escaping from my dish. So I'm pulling the burner out from under the dish, letting it cool just for a moment and then I'll put it back under the dish. I'll pull it back out, and I'm going to do that repeatedly for several minutes. We want the water to be completely evaporated. We want the salt inside the dish to be completely dry, but there's still a little bit of salt spitting out, and you probably can't see it well in the video. Well, actually, you can. There's a little bit of salt on the black tabletop. The more salt that spits out, the bigger that source of error will be. We're going to count, we're going to measure in a moment the mass of the dish with the dry salt in it, and you'll be able to calculate then how many grams of salt were in that saturated solution. So if you look down below in your data table to the results section, you can already calculate the first thing you see there. You had measured the mass of the empty dish. You knew the mass of the dish with the saturated solution. So you can see that you could use those two numbers to calculate the mass of your saturated solution. The first thing that's asked in the results down below. Okay, I'm pulling the burner out, putting it back under, and the salt inside the dish is getting pretty dry. There's, there's some salt that spit out, so that's going to be a source of error you want to make a note of. Some people, because they want, are afraid of losing salt to that spitting, they'll stop heating too early. If you stop heating too early, then what's left in the dish is not just salt. If you don't heat long enough, then you'll still have water left in the evaporating dish, and that would be another source of error. If the salt spits out of the dish, you're losing salt. On the other hand, if water remains in the dish, if you don't heat it until it's completely dry, then it will appear as though the mass of the salt is heavier than it should be. So the water, whoops, that was a big <laughs> spit. The water that would be left in the dish because you didn't heat long enough would make it appear as though the salt's mass were too heavy. So one error loses mass, the other error gains mass. Think about how that might affect your final result. All right, so I can still hear a tiny bit of crackling 
but I'm starting to lose some salt, <laughs> quite a bit of salt. So I'm gonna slow down my heating, and I think I'm actually gonna stop heating the, re the residual heat in the evaporating dish should heat, <laughs> should drive off the water, all right? Now you could criticize my technique because look, there's some actual large bits of salt <laughs> on the tabletop here, but I can cheat, okay? I can take that salt and I can scoop it up and I can add that salt back to my dish. I'm pretty sure this is only salt. The tabletop was clean and dry before. So I'm gonna put that salt back in the dish to minimize the error. All right, so some salt definitely escaped, but I'm pretty confident that what's left in the dish is now dry. So I'm gonna wait for it to cool. I'm gonna pause the video and then we'll come back and mass it again. All right, so I've let the evaporating dish with the dry salt cool for several minutes. I'm wondering if it's able to be handled now, so I'm gonna take my hand and put it near the dish, but I won't touch it. If I feel heat, I leave it alone. If I don't feel any heat, then I'll carefully lift the dish like this from the top, it, it's okay, and I'll put my other hand underneath the dish. If I put my hand under it, I do the same thing. If I feel heat coming off the bottom, then I don't touch. I put it back down to cool again. But if I don't feel any heat on the bottom, then I'll put it in my palm of my hand. And if I can hold it comfortably like I'm doing now, then I can weigh the dish so it's cooled down enough. You can see in the video the dry salt and there's no evidence of water in the dish. So I'm pretty sure we heated long enough. So I'm gonna put that back on the electronic balance and you need to record the mass now. This will be the mass of the dish with the dry salt, the third number up in your, in your data section. So now that we evaporated some of the water, the mass has fallen, it's 46.69 grams. So you now have enough um, data to calculate, to fill in the results section of your table down below you can calculate the mass of salt that was in the solution. We already know the mass of the solution. So if you know the mass of your solution and you know the mass of salt that was in the solution, then you can calculate the mass of water that was in the solution. When you know the mass of the water, then you can also know the, the um, volume of the water from its density, and then you can get your solubility or the concentration of your saturated um, solution. So again, there's the mass of the dish with the dry salt, 46.69 grams. Good luck with your calculations.